In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. O God the Father in heaven, have mercy on us. O God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. O God the Holy Spirit, have mercy upon us. We're reminded from the great psalm of repentance by King David, Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. O Lord, open thou my lips, that my mouth may show forth your praise. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. We're assured that as we confess our sins that our good and gracious God, well, he will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The Holy Gospel appointed for the sixth Sunday after Pentecost is from St. Matthew's Gospel, the 13th chapter. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. And great crowds gathered about him, so that he got into a boat, and he sat down. And the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path. The birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they immediately sprang up. But since they had no depth of soil, well, when the sun arose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain. Some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And then in verse 18 of chapter 13 in Matthew, Jesus explains the parable. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. And for that which was sown on rocky ground, well, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while, and when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. As for what was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but cares for the world and the deceitfulness of riches, choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and yet in another thirty. This is the Gospel of the Lord. This wonderful uh, parable is um, often a, a lead-off parable for uh, many who d deal with the parables. It's uh, one of seven that uh, begins there in uh, Matthew chapter 13. And some people have likened it to a string of pearls. We find that uh, this uh, parable, the parable of the sower, as 
also taken on some other names. There are those that feel that the sower is well, uh, a constant, and they say, well, how about the parable of the seed? After all, that emphasizes the gospel. And yet others, and maybe the most uh, popular other view of this parable in terms of a title, the parable of the soils. That's the uh, factor that is the uh, one that is not the constant, but is the variable factor and makes up the uh, major part of our attention in terms of the teaching in regard to this. As today, I, I would like to follow sort of a, what has been dubbed by some as a the German approach to this particular parable and take a look at the four kinds of soil. Uh, this, by the way, is a lesson that's often teamed with Isaiah chapter 55, verses 10 through 13, which I commend to people's reading. Uh, maybe the most uh, famous part of that passage is where the Lord, speaking through Isaiah, makes this comment. He says, So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth, it shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish what I purpose, and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. That's Isaiah 55, verse 11. Oh, four kinds of soil. The first, oh, something that fell on the path. And I want to be able to appreciate that oh, as this is a more, the format of trying to, to plant in uh, antiquity was to, well, take the soil and to fling it out. And, well, of course, as one got to the edge of wherever they were trying to do that, well, they would often get to a boundary point like a road. And, well, that would usually be fairly hard kind of ground. Uh, a little chance of there being any kind of penetration into the ground, the seed would be something that was there, and yeah, the birds would come down and would eat the seed. Uh, it was something that was easy for them to get a meal, and uh, then nothing came of that seed. Uh, as Jesus explains, there are people that are hard-hearted, and there are people that are easily distracted. Uh, occasionally you'll have them and, yeah, they may hear something on the radio of the preached word of God and quickly change the station. There may be people that even can be enticed to come and hear the word of God as it's preached on some occasion where some family member or friends invite them to a special occasion, whether it be a, a wedding, a confirmation, Okay. any of a multitude of different kind of uh, special uh, events. And well, the person spends most of their time when the sermon comes on or when they're reading the lessons thinking about business matters, about politics. Maybe they're distracted by other things in the congregation and are uh, well, paying more attention to the uh, ladies' uh, hat or attire that happens to be uh, close by. Uh, and people that really don't let the Word of God even begin to penetrate their very being. A second kind of soil that we find is one that is on rocky ground. That would be something that's not stony ground, but rocky ground that is something where uh, there's just no way that uh, the small amount of soil that's on a huge rock, well, it doesn't give the roots any kind of a chance to get down and to be able to get the nourishment that they need. And so, yeah, that kind of uh, seed will spring up quickly, but then, well, because it really can't take care of itself in terms of the nourishment that it needs, the, the water it needs to survive, well, and the very sun that uh, could have been a blessing now becomes something that uh, 
brings a kind of oppressive heat to the young plant that it can't deal with, and so it dies. Well, we know of people that really, I'm going to say, they they get a quick start into something, and well, we see this in other things. Uh, people that decide, hmm, I'm inspired and they're going to do this or that. Maybe they're going to get into an exercise routine. Maybe they're going to go on a diet. And as soon as it becomes the least bit inconvenient, well, they don't have the kind of perseverance to be able to stay with it. And so uh, it quickly dies off. Here today, on tomorrow. One of those kind of things where they're sort of will-o'-the-wisp type of people that, well, they just can't commit themselves to anything in any kind of seriousness. Yet a third type of soil. This is a soil that's described as the thorny soil. What kind of thorns are out there? What are the kind of things that can choke out that which was planted and begins to take seed and actually at least got something of a root down. Um, there are many things that people find and worry. The text itself speaks about riches or money. And you know, there's also that of pleasure. Um, and sometimes we'll even say to our kids, well, hey, Come on, get away from those computer video games and all this watching TV. You're going to become a vidiot. You're going to be somebody that you know never gets any exercise. You're just going to let your mind get caught up in stuff that in the end really doesn't mean that much. Uh, there are people that uh, do that. Uh, one of the more interesting books that I own in terms of a title is Amusing Themselves to Death. Uh, there are people that they get so caught up with the amusements of this world, they never really figure out what the most important things about life are to be. Mm. Thus we have the thorny type of soil. And it is something where you find a lot of people that, well, as soon as they run into anything that uh, shows that they've really cramp their lifestyle as far as they're concerned. They're, they're not able to enjoy some of the things that they used to be able to enjoy. They give up on the real treasure of the Word of God and they settle for something that is much more temporal, but it satisfies them more immediately. There are so many times in life that we have to be looking at what... Uh, has been called delayed gratification. I, I don't take what I've got easily now, but I delay my gratification. I delay the time that I'm going to have to really enjoy that which is truly worthwhile. And we make good, reasonable kind of sacrifices. The fourth kind of soil is the good soil. It is true that in ancient days, a what happened is that the sower would sow the seed and then plow, try to get some of that seed to get a chance to get down a little bit deeper. There's a limit to what you can do, again, on the, the rock. There's a limit to what they could do about, okay, dealing with the weeds. They often would go around those. But there is that kind of soil where, yeah, there can be a chance for things to really get caught up and grow. For us, it means that, well, what is the seed? The seed is the gospel. The wonderful word of God that talks about God's continued love for us, God's desire to have fellowship with us, God's well, desire to offer us his forgiveness. Uh, it's the most precious thing of all. That seed, uh, it's something that needs to be heard. Okay, we can 
hardly find that we can love God in return and know that he's even inclined to allow us to be forgiven if we've never heard. And so uh, Paul talks about that dilemma in the book of Romans and says, well, okay, how can they believe those who've never heard? Uh, he uh, articulates the importance of the whole, importance of the whole missionary enterprise. And thus, we're going to be able to appreciate, well, first of all, we need to hear the word of God. Blessed are that hear the word of God and keep it. When one hears the word of God, it's something that people need to, to contemplate. It's something that they need to hear and then, oh, as we usually translate Luther in terms of the uh, explanation to the Ten Commandments, what does this mean? Okay, and from the German, was ist das? What is this? Well, people need to think need to think about, oh, what about this word? And how does it apply to me? Mm -hmm. And then finally, well, one needs to incorporate what they've heard and what they've contemplated into action. Well, scripture says, be ye doers of the word, not hearers only. And so it's important that we look to say, well, okay, mm -hmm. We hear what is good and right. Now let us endeavor to do it. This text has a lot to offer, and it's something that certainly first and foremost much apply to ourselves, but also to those that we have the privilege to serve and that we love. I don't know, most notably our children, but also well, can be those that we have the privilege of having as employees that uh, work alongside us and with us can be those that we have other significant relationships with. Uh, we can help by plowing the ground, by helping them to avoid the kind of obvious pitfalls that are there. Uh, Satan is going to be there to... Uh, be what he is, the opposer of God, the adversary of all those that God would cause to be called by his love. Well, Satan doesn't want to see God succeed. He wants somehow or another with some uh, foolish notion to be able to try to defeat God. He thinks that he can do this well, by sending evil thoughts, by... Uh, causing people to be caught up by worldly desires and carnal lusts. We need to, for ourselves and for those that are around us, find that we are aware of these kind of pitfalls, these kind of challenges, and with a dedication, go forth and root out these kind of things that can only lead us to destruction and to sadness. Instead, and concentrate on that which is right and pure and good that will cause our lives to be worth living, cause our lives to be uh, successful in the most important sense of the word. The parable of the sower. Who is the one that shares the word? Well, first and foremost, it was Jesus. Jesus shared the word. And now we, as the body of Christ, have that privilege. The Holy Spirit, with all of his divine power, works through humble instruments like ourselves, but he works with the truth of the gospel, the good news, the truth that God does love us and wants to forgive us. Let's go forth with that mighty power and, well, let's indeed find that we're the good fruit. The good fruit that uh, comes for well, producing 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold to the glory of God and, frankly, to our glory, too. May the Lord bless us in that venture, now and forever. Amen.
Let us pray. O almighty and most merciful God, in this earthly life we endure sufferings and death before we enter into eternal glory. Grant us grace at all times to subject ourselves to your holy will and to continue steadfast in the true faith to the end of our lives, that we may know the peace and joy of the blessed hope of the resurrection of the dead and of the glory of the world to come. O Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O ever-present Lord, you have promised never to leave us or forsake us, but to abide with us to the end of time. Please grant that those who live alone may not be lonely, but find both comfort from your promises and fulfillment in loving you and their neighbors in all their days. For we ask this in and through our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, keep this nation under your care. Bless the leaders of our land that we may be a people at peace among ourselves and a blessing to the other nations of the earth. Grant that, they, that we may choose trustworthy leaders, contribute to wise decisions for the general welfare, and serve you faithfully in our generation. For we ask this in and through Jesus, who is our Lord and Savior. O oh Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now, Lord, we bring to you those things most urgent, and we ask that you would hear them as we utilize that perfect, all-encompassing model prayer that the Lord Jesus himself taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us all. Amen. Amen.